Well, it came about when my daughters were very young, and I, Saturday was always uh, Daddy's Day with the two daughters. So we'd start out and try to go someplace with, you know, different things, and I would take them to the merry ground, and I took them different places, and as I'd sit there while they, uh, they rode the merry ground, did all these things, sit on a bench, you know, eating peanuts, I felt that there should be something built, some kind of a amusement enterprise built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. But I was making cartoons uh, long before that. In fact, uh, I think I've been in this business about as long as anybody living today. I started actually in the, um, uh, to make my first animated cartoons in uh, 1920. Of course, they're very crude things then, and uh, I used... Uh, Oh, sort of little puppet things. We didn't draw them like we do today. I used to make little cutout things and joints were pinned and we'd put them under the camera and we'd maneuver them and make them do things. And, and this is was before you came to Hollywood, actually. Oh, yes. This started back in Kansas City, Missouri, where I was uh, working in the, oh, we made the little advertisements for theaters. It's equivalent to what you see in TV commercials today, you know? Uh-huh. Put your winter coal in early, you know? Get your, uh, your, uh, uh, fedora block for the winter <laughs> and uh, all those kinds of things. Get your oh, this was back in the days when the, they had the uh, old canvas tops on cars. Get your top renewed. Yes, he was uh, born in a uh, little town. Uh, I think they called it Bluevale. It's right out of Godrich. And uh, my uh, the Disney family were uh, Anglo Irish, and they migrated over there in the 1830s. That uh, which makes me feel that the Disneys had foresight because it was 1840 when they had the potato family in Ireland, but they were smart enough to get out before that. And my father was born there, and he was raised there, and went to school there. He, in fact, uh, he went to school in Godrich. And he was about 20 years old when my grandfather went to Kansas, out in the same area where uh, General Eisenhower, ex-President Eisenhower, came from. And he, uh, he was an alien, of course, being a Canadian, and he had to buy his land. He couldn't homestead. And he bought a section of railroad land, and that property uh, stayed with the Disney family until uh, just a few years ago, and my uncle had it, and, and he, I uh, told him, I said, before you sell it, let, let us know. And uh, so finally he wanted to sell it and retire. And I went to my brother, I said, let's buy this, this virgin land that our ancestors, you know, acquired. And he said, what do we want with farming land? He wouldn't go with me. So I didn't go ahead. I found out later they struck gas and oil on it. <laughs> well, you can't win them all. No. <laughs> Tell me, Walt, have you been back to, to your father's homestead at all in recent years? My father and I had planned to go back because as, uh, as a boy, my father always told me about uh, his boyhood in Canada. And uh, you, you see here, Fourth of July is a big deal here, but my father always referred to the Queen's birthday, and that was Victoria. And that's when they had their big uh, doings, you know. And I always uh, wanted to go up there with my father because as a youngster, you know, he told me about all these different things that he did in, in the country. He thought it was the most beautiful country in the world, and yet he'd come down here to live. And uh, he died before we had a chance to do that. Well, after your father's death, did you finally get a chance to get back up to the old homestead? Yes, I finally made it. I took Mrs. Disney along. Now, she's not too interested in uh, ancestors and things, you know. Uh... When we got up there, she really fell in love with the town of Godrich. It was a beautiful little town. And she was quite happy about it. But I wanted to find my uh, the, the homestead where my, uh, my grandfather, you know, went out and cut the trees down and pulled the rocks apart and where my father was born. So they gave me directions, and everybody was trying to be helpful and everything. And Mrs. Disney reluctantly went along. And I found this old place, and I said, this is it. There, it was really deserted. There were cows running through the house and chickens around. And I had my camera, and I got out, and I photographed that thing from every angle. And uh, when I got through, I found out I'd photographed the wrong homestead. <laughs> well, ever since, Mrs. Disney has never forgot. She, she tells that to everybody about when Walt went up to Canada, and he photographed the wrong homestead, you know. Well, let's, let's leave that in, in the past where it properly belongs and look ahead for a moment to, to the future, Walt. What's, um, what's on your uh, immediate schedule? I gather there are some projects for the World's Fair in New York. Yes, they're more or less uh, of, uh, 
an extension of Disneyland in a way. We're doing uh, four shows for the World's Fair. Four? Uh, yes, it's uh, about $50 million worth of shows that we're doing for the World's Fair. Of course, that includes the cost of the building, the rent of the land, everything. We're doing one for the Ford Motor Company. We're doing one for General Electric. We're doing one for the uh, Pepsi Cola Company and the state of Illinois. These are, these are uh, when you say extensions of Disneyland, uh, are, are any of them uh, uh, audio animatronic? In yes, audio animatronic and, and the dimensional type of, of uh, shows like we do at Disneyland, not film shows. There's no film involved in any of these shows. We, uh, we use our audio animatronic figures. And at the uh, State of Illinois exhibit, we're going to have great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln is going to be there. He's going to, to speak five times an hour. He's going to be very lifelike and very, very believable. And we've, we're finding some wonderful words of Mr. Lincoln that are still prophetic today. I think it's going to be a great moment for the public when they can sit and hear Mr. Lincoln talk about some of the things. What, what is liberty? You know, the rights and the obligations that we have and all of that. I think it's needed today, too. I should say it is. Well, Walt, um, it's, it's very difficult to talk about rewards because certainly you, you've had so many of them. 29 Oscars and nearly 700 other awards from all corners of the world, but personally, what, what has been your greatest reward to date? Well, my greatest reward, I think, is that uh, I've been enabled to build this wonderful organization, I've been able to enjoy good health, and uh, the way I feel today, I feel like uh, I can still go on being a part of this thing after 40-some-odd years in the business, and uh, also to have the, the public... Uh, appreciate and accept what I've done all these years. That That is a great reward. I'm sure it is. It, it seems unlikely, but if, if you had it to do over again, would you do any part of it differently? Well, if I had it to do over again, uh, I think... Uh, no, I don't think it would. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I don't have to do it over again. <laughs> There's certainly a, a, a completely unique reward in having that feeling about your work and what you've accomplished. Yes. That's, You're right. that's a reward of satisfaction and happiness, surely. Yes. What, what does happiness mean to you, Mr. Ward? Well, of course, I mean, happiness is a, is a state of mind. I mean, that you can, uh, if, if you're of your own doing, you can be happy or you can be unhappy. It's just according to the way you look at things, you know. So I think uh, happiness is, uh, uh, well, contentment, but it doesn't mean you have to have wealth, you know. But all individuals are different. And so others uh, wouldn't be satisfied with just carrying out a routine job and, and being happy. Uh, yet I, I, I envy those people. I, I had a brother who, who uh, I really envied because he was a mailman. But he had all the fun. He had himself a trailer. And he used to go off and go fishing, and he didn't worry about payrolls and, and stories and, and picture grocers or anything. And he, he was the happy one. I, I always said, he's the smart Disney. <laughs> <laughs>